Despite the massive amount of flack that it gets, I do think that remake culture has at least one positive benefit, even if it's an ironic one, that being that it gets people interested in seeing the original project. If there weren't a remake airing right now, my copy of Kino's Journey would probably have sat untouched on my shelf for years, as it had been already. And after finally diving in, I can easily say that it has the potential to join my list of favorites. Unfortunately, I can't say the same about the remake, which is inferior to the original in almost every way imaginable. I could go on and on about every meticulous detail and how it fails to match up to its predecessor, but I'll try and stick to the most important points as we uncover why the Kino's Journey remake just kinda sucks. From here onward, I will be referring to the 2003 Kino's Journey as OG Kino, while the 2017 remake will be known as Lurch Kino, as per the studio helming the project. Let's get the most superficial point out of the way right off the bat, Lurch Kino is not a good looking show. There is almost nothing about the quality of artwork nor presentation of the animation that I find appealing about Lurch Kino. Sure, OG Kino certainly doesn't have the best animation quality either, but what it does have is consistency and brilliance of design. There's nothing gaudy or eyesore-ish about OG Kino because it mostly sticks to the same washed out color palette for each episode. And that color palette is often effectively used to create a tense and oppressive atmosphere for the story being told, thus keeping the viewer on the edge of their seat. This isn't much of a surprise though, coming from the same director as Serial Experiments Lane. Lurch Kino has no design consistency other than trying to make the characters stay on model, which really isn't even that necessary. Occasionally the characters in OG Kino look a bit wonky, but their designs are so simple that it doesn't look that bad. Lurch Kino, on the other hand, suffers from over-designed characters. That might sound like a stupid criticism at first, but it accounts for a lot of what I hate about Lurch Kino. When the elements that make up the composition of a single frame have simpler designs, it makes it easier to combine each element together to create a cohesive and well-crafted shot. When each element is more complex, it becomes more difficult to combine those elements in a way that feels cohesive. It's not impossible, just more difficult and more prone to failure. This is actually a problem that I have with a lot of post-fate UFO table anime. Every individual element looks great, but the combination of those elements creates an unappealing eyesore. But that's a video for another time. What's more, it doesn't even feel like the picture as a whole was even taken into account when each individual element was created. Created. Just look at these shots of Kino and Hermes against the background. Kino is drawn in a crisp, highly digital style with a lot of detail. The background feels a bit less detailed in each individual pen stroke and just sort of melts into itself, at least when the digital compositing actually works, and Hermes is a CG model. As individual elements, they might look fine, but when combined together, it looks like garbage. Yes, it is possible to make those styles blend together in a positive way. Girl's Last Tour seems to be doing it just fine, but Lurch Kino just isn't doing it well. Either the artistic talent of the animators or the production time frame is not sufficient enough to blend all of these elements effectively. I truly think it's a mistake to give the artwork in Kino's journey this much detail because it takes away from the message of each story and puts the focus on the wrong ideas, which leads me to another huge problem with Lurch Kino, Kino herself. The Kino in Lurch Kino has far too much focus put on her and is given way too much personality. Again, it sounds like a stupid criticism for the main character to be too detailed, but that's kind of the point with this character. The story is not about Kino. It's about the places she visits and the people that she interacts with in those places. It's about the ideas that each society presents and how it comments on the human condition. Isolation, cultural identity, citizenship, democracy, adulthood, work. The point of Kino's journey is for the audience to explore these ideas, not for Kino to explore them. Kino is just a traveler who only stays in a country for three days and then moves on to another country. This is not a character who develops intimate relationships with anyone, even the audience. Kino is a transient being, and so her personality needs to be kept to a minimum. This is why a lot of OG Kino's reactions to bizarre ideas are kept relatively ambiguous 
ambiguous unless her reaction is meant to signal a change in the story's direction or a pivotal action that she's about to take. There's really only one episode where Kino is a person of intense focus, and the reason for that is because it's a backstory episode that shows us how she became a traveler in the first place. As much as I've ragged on audience stand-ins in the past, OG Kino is the perfect example of how to do this trope right. Her ambiguous appearance and reactions make it much harder for the audience to determine how she feels about a certain issue unless she states it directly, thus forcing the audience to draw their own conclusions. This is a smart show that wants to make you think, and it accomplishes that brilliantly. Lurch Kino is given way too many facial expressions and personality quirks. She smiles, frowns, stares people down, gets visibly upset. There's hardly a moment where you can't tell what she's thinking, and that defeats the entire point of her character. If Lurch Kino as the main character gives us a definitive answer as to how she feels about an idea, it becomes a shorthand method of conveying to the audience that we should also feel this way. After all, Lurch Kino is still an audience stand-in, just not a very good one this time. Granted, there are moments where OG Kino explicitly states her ideas about stuff, but most of the time it comes after the fact where Kino is just sort of hypothesizing about ideas that she doesn't really care too much about, as opposed to Lurch Kino who seems to be notably invested in the ideas she confronts. It makes it feel much more like Kino is driving the story forward rather than the characters that she meets in each country. This brings me to the biggest problem I have with this remake. Frankly, it just misses the entire point of what Kino's journey is about. Let's take a look at the first episode of OG Kino, Land of Visible Pain. In this episode, Kino visits a town with incredibly advanced technology. However, it appears that everyone in that town is living in total isolation and shuns any kind of contact with other people. Once Kino finally manages to have a conversation with one of the town's residents, he reveals that the advanced technology of the town allowed them to modify their bodies so that they could understand each other's thoughts, allowing for much easier communication. Of course, this idea eventually turned sour because it meant that people could no longer hide thoughts from each other, and so the non-stop communication eventually drove everyone into isolation. The takeaway from this episode is that the bad situations that people impose on others are more so the result of societal systems and cultural practices rather than individual failings. Yes, individual failings are still present, but addressing cultural failings is much more important. Additionally, most of these cultural failings come out of a desire to do good and better the human race and society as a whole. This is why the most famous quote from this series is so powerful. The world is not beautiful, therefore it is. It means that despite humanity's failings, they are failings done for what we believe is the good of society, and that accepting humanity as a flawed species makes us appear beautiful because we are ultimately a force for good. There is beauty in our failings because they come out of benevolence rather than malice, and practically every episode of OG Kino is firmly couched in this ideology. Now let's take a look at the first episode of Lurch Kino, a town where people can kill others. In this episode, Kino meets up with someone who's traveling to a country where there is no law against murdering people. Why is he going there? Because he wants to kill someone, of course. Not a particular person who has wronged him, though. He just wants to kill someone to satisfy his own desire to kill someone. Do you see how this idea immediately misses the point? Never mind the fact that the twist at the end of this episode doesn't really change the nature of the lack of murder laws, or the fact that this is probably one of the most violent opening episodes to a show airing this season, before we even get to the town where murder is legal, Lurch Kino has already missed the point by including such an overtly evil character. Having The Beautiful World be part of this show's title is almost laughable in this instance. There is nothing about this episode that suggests the world is beautiful in any way. If anything, it postures that the world is ugly and cruel. A world dominated by violence where strict adherence to cultural practices is a good thing because, as portrayed by this episode, there are no significant drawbacks to even the most barbaric of cultural practices. Does that sound like a beautiful world to you? There is no metacritical discussion that could be had about this episode because it fails to convey any significant thought that could lead to the betterment of the human race. Hell, it 
doesn't even give you much of an idea to think about at all. Sure, you could argue that it makes the case for anarchism, but since murder is the only law that doesn't exist, that concept kind of goes out the window. And yes, I understand that this episode was pulled from the same source material as OG Kino, but that doesn't make it a good representation of said source material. I'm not going to pretend I know anything about the light novels or how loosely or strictly they were adapted for each anime, but it's an adaptation for a reason. You can tweak or exclude stuff that just doesn't work. I'm not sure if this particular story was already written when OG Kino was adapted, but if it was, then I'm pretty sure this particular story was excluded from OG Kino for a reason, and that reason seems pretty obvious if Lurch Kino turns out to be a relatively strict adaptation. And so, through lackluster presentation, putting focus on the wrong ideas, and just missing the point of the stories entirely, Lurch Kino ultimately fails in all areas where OG Kino succeeded. As much as I would love to see animated versions of the stories I haven't seen yet, this simply is not the way I want to see them. Special thanks to Jan Rogowski, Rourke Ten Join, and all my other patrons for their generous support. If you'd like your name listed here as well, along with access to content such as a Discord server and patron-exclusive videos, check out the link in the description below. Thanks for watching everyone, the fall season is almost over, and like usual, I'm completely behind on everything. But I'll be done with my schoolwork for this semester in another week, so I should have a lot more time to work on videos soon. Also, I'm gearing up for a huge multi-video project in February, so I'm going to be spending a ton of time working on that as well. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring that little notification bell so you can stay up to date on all my latest content, share this video around with people you think might be interested, leave a comment below about what you thought and other topics you'd like me to cover in the future, visit my vlogging channel for random thoughts that don't make it into my main channel videos, check out my written content over at Digital Fox Media, and don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. My name is Ember, and I'll see you next time.